Hi everybody, I'm Marcus Ransom, an Apple Solutions Architect here at CompNow, and I'm joined with Aaron Polly, who's our Queensland State Engineering Manager, and Russell Kelly, a Senior Pre-Sales Engineer based out of Sydney. So the Jamf Nation User Conference ran last week, and all the Jamf geeks here at CompNow have been watching and participating in the sessions, and we're really looking forward to sharing with you as well as hearing about your JNUC experiences. So our team of skilled Jamf engineers are available to help you with your Apple fleet, whether it's for one of our modern deployment reviews, helping to set up a new Jamf environment from scratch, or preparing for Apple Silicon, Mac OS Monterey, or iOS 15. So Aaron, what were your takeouts from watching the Jamf Nation user conference? Look, uh, Marcus, it was really interesting to see, I guess, the transition that's been happening over a few years, but of Jamf, uh, going from a product company with you know the original Casper suite, uh, more recently known as Jamf Pro, kind of being the feature, if you like, or the, the, uh, uh, the golden child of, of the organization, to really being a platform company. And you know, a case of, of acquiring different companies, developing new products, they've really broadened the reach as an organization from being, hey, we, we manage Macs and sometimes those iOS things too, to really being an enterprise grade uh, platform to manage, yes, very much Apple devices, but we're seeing now touches of how that extends uh, not only to the person that just owns Apple, but owns Apple and, and some pretty cool stuff. Um, and the way that they've approached, I think, uh, even just the keynote um, this year. And something that seemed to be a really consistent theme throughout many of the things they were presenting really was uh, security. Um, security, security, security. Uh, I know it's something, something that we've seen with everybody you know, transitioning to work from home or coming back into more hybrid solutions, everybody sort of having a step back and assessing how they're managing the security of their fleet. So there were, there were a lot of really awesome solutions in there to uh, look after not just you know your Mac and your iOS fleet, but as you were saying, the the wider fleet of your organisation using these tools that are designed to support Mac and iOS, but are also able to give benefits to the rest of your fleet as well. Hundred percent, and I think um, a great a great point in that is as they build these breadth of tools, and, and as you said, a uh, security being a massive focus for this year, um, they're also very much positioning it in a way that hey. As, as Jamf, we can equip you with all of these things, but hey, if you've got other tools that you want these tools to work with, that's okay too. And very much uh, kind of fitting in where the customer needs, not, not trying to take over the customer. So Russell, in your role, role as a pre-sales engineer, um, going out there talking to customers about problems they need to address and potential solutions for those problems, what were some of the things that you saw at JNUC that are going to help uh, address those, those challenges and those real world examples that we have? It's a really great thought, Marcus, and I've found that this JNUC has been really focused on the security um, of the end devices. Um, J Jamf has always been uh, very security conscious, but there has been some things that we've been you know, as a community, really wanting to uh, be able to utilize um, and have actually implemented by Jamf themselves. Um, and what we were able to do from a pre-sales perspective now is kind of go to the clients and say, look, Jamf has really expanded their security platform um, and Im implemented some really great products to be able to um, ensure that end users as well as IT can have a seamless integration from a compliance perspective of their devices. What, one of the sessions that I really enjoyed was um, Eric Boyd from UC San Diego Health with Kat Garbus from Jamf, talking about Jamf Protect and how they use that at the, the teaching hospital um, to get the information they needed, that security information, the telemetry, the, the, the metrics, the data uh, into their seam for the security team to look at. And, and some of the great points that, uh, that Eric made were having security tools that are designed around the Apple ecosystem, that there, there are tools out there that will work well on both Mac, um, Apple uh, and other platforms, but there are also plenty of tools out there that don't really consider the Apple platforms particularly well. And the challenge with that is you're not actually getting decent information. You're not actually getting the telemetry. You're getting the compliance of saying that you have something installed and there's a tick and you're covered but are you actually getting value? Are you getting protection from it? So being able to implement tools that are actually giving value um, are not slowing down the machines that the users um, need to do their job. So you're not getting in the way of their day-to-day -day work, 
but are then giving you that confidence that you know what's going on, uh, you know what's not going on, uh, and that you're actually getting that, that, that compliance you're talking about. So you can comfortably go into an audit and say, we, we know where things are, we're, we're comfortable with our risk profile here. Yeah, it's a very good point, Marcus. And I find that um, when it comes to the Apple ecosystem, Apple have done an amazing job of being able to make their devices super secure. Um, but, and Jamf has done an ex excellent job of being able to, you know, uh, distribute um, uh, configuration profiles and have this automation in the background to ensure that there is compliance there. But I feel like that where we are now with a lot of this security stuff that's come through in this um, JNUC is really going to kind of close the gap from a compliancy perspective, especially when we have, you know, you know, the government, um, uh, you know, starting to mandate certain um, you know, strict policies um, from an essential aid perspective, um, it's really going to allow businesses to really bring um, that feedback loop um, into play so that they can really kind of tick the boxes without having leaving it to a little bit of guesswork, uh, which is what we've seen previously. And I know one of the challenges we've had as Jamf admins is often we've tried to use Jamf Pro, the tools that we, we know and love, to be able to perform that auditing and that compliance. And, you know, there's been some amazing, talented and creative individuals out there who have managed to, you know, get these workflows happening. But the simplicity and the um, supportability of these um, solutions, but also seeing uh, the Jamf Security Cloud, um, the previously known as Wandera products, start to move out to be, to be cross-platform. So these great solutions that we've got, rather than being something specifically for the, for the Macs, looking at it and going, well, these actually support everything else. So we're no longer in the position of saying, oh, we need to have a separate solution for our Macs for security and that being a problem. It's like, well, this one might actually be better or more appropriate for our organisation th than what we have, and it will cover everything we have in our fleet. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I honestly think that we're kind of going into a newer space when it comes to Apple being brought into enterprise. Um, you know, being at Comp now, we've kind of been known in the in the industry for quite a long time that you know we've been able to integrate Macs into enterprise um, uh, from that perspective. But what we're seeing now is that you know with employee choice coming on board with a lot of the larger corporate corporates um, and education, um, we're finding that we you know the Macs are actually being brought into the fold and into the discussion based upon, um, uh, you know, from a security perspective. Um, long gone are the days where Apples have kind of just been their own little niche. Um, they're actually starting, and with Apple's ability um, and already existing security features inside, they're actually starting to shape a lot of these corporate, um, traditional corporate um, uh, viewpoints of security um, because we're seeing this, you know, innovation of, um, of management of the devices actually ensuring that we can have compliance there. So Google were also part of the keynote with announcements around their uh, BeyondCorp uh, conditional access and Google Chrome management. So Aaron, what were your takeouts from that? Where, where do you see that um, fitting in? Look, it's, it's quite interesting, Marcus. I mean, we have uh, a case where, you know, traditionally, particularly as admins, we very much have been thinking about managing the device, right? So managing all the elements of a device as to does someone have admin access or not? Can they, you know, turn on a setting or not, et cetera? And, and kind of the idea of managing the browser and potentially only the browser or the browser in conjunction with device management is interesting because it kind of fits that idea that, um, for example, we may or may not care about the rest of the device. Maybe we only care about that one element. And that kind of dovetails in some other areas that Jamf spoke about um, recently as well. And I think it's really interesting to see that Google is focusing on, right, Mac is, a, is, a, is an important platform. We need to make sure that because we deal with Mac and, and Windows and all the different platforms, let's take this one piece of software, this piece of software, Chrome, that exists across multiple spheres, and let's let's look at what it needs to do. Let's look at what an organization can do, again, from an ideas of compliance and protection, and 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 put that there. And I think um, it's really cool to see that, that Google is enabling these tools so that no matter what a person's preference is to work on a platform and, and a piece of hardware that empowers them to do their best work, whether that be Windows, whether that be Mac, et cetera, they can use a common browser and have the same policy and the same principles applied to that, no matter whether the device is managed or not. Um, 
from from a corporate organizational management standpoint. So it opens up a lots of possibilities of the gray, which quite frankly is 2020, 2021 with COVID is people are using all sorts of devices. And so we can look at the browser, not necessarily the whole device. Also the idea of um, unified endpoint management where we have this single pane of glass and that's where all of the management for everything happens out of. And we're really throwing this back to something Jamf have been uh, championing for a long time, which is best of breed. So, you know, we know Jamf, you know, is the, the, the best tool for managing Macs, um, but for managing your browser, for managing Google Chrome, well, Google Workspace is going to be the best place to manage that. They're going to be up to date. Um, that's what they do. It's their product. So leveraging into that is, you know, really makes a lot of sense. Um, and as you were saying, getting the consistency. If you're in Google Chrome on one of our devices, this is what the uh, experience is going to be like. So, so Russell, I know you were very much interested in the conditional access piece, uh, being able to look at organisational security through Google Workspace. Yeah, Marcus, that was one of the things that really um, uh, kind of took me aback. I, 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 we've been waiting. We've had conditional access um, on uh, the Azure platform um, uh, for a while, and being as being able to have that kind of uh, conditional access from a Google Workspace really um, really opens up the doors to a lot of clients that uh, that are on that Google platform. Yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting to see where that's going to going to go. Now, another interesting topic. I know we've we've, we've all watched this session, uh, and Paul Bowden from Microsoft is someone who um, is is a big friend of the the Mac admin community. And his presentation on managing uh, Microsoft Office applications was was really awesome. Yeah, look, uh, I I definitely found um, just walking through and, and and encourage anyone who who does manage Office, which is probably many of you, um, in your environment, is look at this slide because it or this presentation, sorry, because it actually gives a really good picture of the high level. What what does Microsoft expect you to do with the management, and and what are the things that are not expecting you to do, or what are the frameworks? So an example of that was was a three month window, and actually not just saying, hey, three months, that's a great arbitrary. Uh, amount of time that you should have a new version be within then that window, but actually going into depth as to hey, we, we actually try to help you out and do some some things with how you know there's delta variants of the patching and all sorts of interesting things that he went into to really go hey we're we're trying to not just think about it's a piece of software on that you install once we know it's an iterative thing that you have to update all the time and we're trying to give you the best tools to do that um, so it was really really cool to see um that in depth not only what but why and and, and go into those details also looking at the the sort of the tools that admins had created themselves, having on-prem manifests and distribution points to try and get around where Microsoft's offering wasn't quite in line with their organisation. And I really like the approach of rather than saying, you know, no, no, that's the wrong way, you should do it this way. They're like, well, if, if there's a requirement for all of that, how can we actually build that into our product so that you no longer have to look after all of that? We can, we can actually very easily look after that on your behalf. So the ability to say, all right, we want these devices to be on a three-day delay for update, a seven-day delay for updates, a 21-day delay for updates, so that that can be in line with whatever your requirements are in your business, but still have the supported mechanism for keeping those devices up to date was fantastic. So, so Russell, you work closely with a lot of our education customers. What are some of the things you think they're going to get out of the, the, the announcements Jamf have made this year? Well, I thought there was two really great announcements this year from JNUC. Um, one was the uh, Jamf Safe Internet and the other one was the uh, Jamf Assessment app. Um, I think the GF assessment app is is fantastic. Um, I personally has kind of been waiting for it for a little bit. Um, from the you know within GF you can do single app mode, and when that first came out a long time ago, um, I automatically thought to myself that having an assessment based app directly in there, so you don't have to go to any kind of third parties to be able to do your assessments, is a great idea. So been waiting for that one personally for a long time, um, and when it comes to the GF Safe Internet that got released. Um, uh, I feel like that's a great um, starting point um, for uh, an amalgamation between Jamf Pro and the devices that it's managing, as well as kind of bringing into fold the idea of, um, of web-based traffic filtering. I really feel like that's a great um, uh, you know, direction for Jamf to go in, just purely because it gives IT admins a much more um, seamless experience and single pane of glass um, to, to manage their, uh, their web-based flows and traffic flows for the students out there. 
So, Aaron, I know one of the other sessions you really enjoyed, which I enjoyed as well, was uh, the session that Bryson and Emily from Jamf conducted called uh, Between Two Jamps. Do you want to run us through what that was about? Yeah, look, uh, Marcus, it was kind of, you know, after we've talked all about the platform and all the security elements and all the new things, uh, I guess, that came to us from JNUC, um, let's bring it back home. Let's bring it back to Jamf Pro and the thing that we all know and love. Uh, these guys really took us through the doctor it hurts elements of hey here's the things you should do and here's the things you probably shouldn't and uh, as someone who's managed jamf for a long time as as uh, you guys have as well marcus and and, and russell it's uh, some of those were close to home you know uh, some things that were, we've i've done that before um and uh, but i know it's bad and i know it's bad now and uh, look I, I think it was really cool to really not only get uh, i guess the name and shame but a framework a framework to go hey Here's a way that I can make decisions and 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 approach choices to to do what's going to be best for my organization, not only now but for future people that need to uh, uh, wrangle what I've left behind. And I think that's a really really important thing that across all of IT um, we really should keep in mind is that hey, I love my job and I'm going to be here for a while, but someday I'm not and I need to look after and care for the people that are going to come after me because at the end of the day, all of what we do affects you know real end users you know, that are trying to just do their work or study or whatever it is that they're trying to do with these devices. So, yeah, some fantastic kind of tips and tricks are really, really practical around, um, yeah, the, the do's and don'ts and the ways to approach if, for example, you're taking on, um, someone else's work. It was it was really really good. Yeah, be, being intentional about what you're building while you're building it and thinking about how this is going to live ongoing um, is is a really great approach. But seeing it documented the way they did, um, making it so simple and straightforward was was amazing. I also thought it was pretty funny that we had uh, Emily, who is the current uh, admin of Jamps. Jeff Pro environment and Bryson, who's the former, and and how you could tell there was some, yeah, I did that, uh, and now I'm telling you not to do it. We've all been in, in either of those shoes, right? <laughs> Hindsight is a wonderful tool. Exactly. So the presentations are still available on Jamf's virtual conferencing platform for the next 30 days, and then they'll be moving across to YouTube, where there's also a really great library of amazing resources for understanding the directions Jamf's going in or seeing some amazing things people in the community are doing with Jamf. So we can't wait to talk to you about the things we've discussed and what they mean to your organisation. So get in touch through your account manager or email info at compnow.com.au. Uh, Russell and Aaron, thanks for giving up the time in your busy days to speak with me today um, and look forward to seeing you soon.